Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad uh, you have uh, decided to join us on the webinar for Cloud Connect for RFID. Uh, we're going to talk about what is Cloud Connect and why uh, you should be interested in it. Uh, then we're going to go through some details of how you would enroll a reader into Cloud Connect, uh, managing readers, and then actually getting tag data from them. Um, we're going to go through the basics of all of that, and hopefully you'll come out of it with uh, an understanding of what it is and how you can use it. So why would you want to have Cloud Connect for RFID? Um, traditionally speaking, most RFID readers uh, if you wanted to access them remotely, had two different potential ways to do it, was to have on-premise servers. That's the more traditional way of working with RFID readers, uh, was to every time you had a reader in any location, you had to have an on-premise server to handle the incoming tag data and process it, and then potentially send it on to another server somewhere else to handle uh, the data coming in. There's another potential way that you could have done it, which was to have a on-device custom application um, that would usually go to an IoT type of server that would handle the data as well uh, in different ways. Um, so there, there are a couple of different ways to do this. This uh, Cloud Connect for RFID is actually built into the firmware of the FX readers now. So that means that you don't have to have an on-premise server or a custom application running on the device, it's all built in. Um, and I'll go into some of the details of what that means and how that works throughout this conversation. Um, but that was that's sort of the you know top level that it's all built into the firmware now on the readers, and that um, you know all of the activities that or a lot of the activities that you could do with on-premise servers and custom applications. Um, you don't have to have those things anymore. Um, a lot of times, you know, having the on-premise server is a big cost, uh, especially if you've got multiple locations with, you know, only a handful of readers. It was a major part of the cost to have those re those servers. And, you know, with an IoT type of service, a lot of times you have to pay the service fee on the IoT service as well. Um, so some of the things that we currently have available, and this is just a first step in the process, in, in what we're going to have available as far as this product goes. Um, but the two things that we have as, as the primary um, offerings are managing fixed readers and accessing the tag read data. We have fancy names for them, um, cloud management of RFID and uh, cloud data transmission. Uh, but those are the two uh, two main things that are in there and we'll go through them today. Um, eventually in the future, you'll see additional uh, features and functionality that are built off of these um, that will, will be helpful as you go forward as well. Um, for management, uh, it there are it's a set of APIs that allow you to do things like management configuration, LED control, tag reading, and I'll go through those APIs and so you can see them in action. Um, and then the other portion is accessing the tag reads. Um, so they gives you that uh, that ability to get essentially a webhook um, of of the tag reads pushed to your servers um, it, as the event happens. So. There's some pretty useful things uh, for our customers and, and partners as they are integrating uh, RFID readers into their solutions. Um, from an overview standpoint, um, we do have a page on the developer portal for the Cloud Connect for RFID. Uh, it is currently, I'm gonna actually pull up the site so you can see it. Uh, it is currently under the APIs page. So developer.zebra.com slash APIs, you'll see Cloud Connect for RFID. And we have a lot of documentation in here um, that you might wanna go through. So registering your reader into the service so that it can connect up um, is through my devices. All of the webhook subscriptions are under my subscriptions. We also have a couple of guides and instructions on how to do all of this. Um, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, we have uh, the different uh, applications that we have, uh, or the, the APIs and web folks that are associated with this product are listed down here at the bottom. So uh, the other thing to this is that um, you can register a reader uh, into the service, you can enroll a reader into the service without 
um, needing to do anything that's available today um, that you can do it, but you won't be able to use any of the APIs or webhooks until you have uh, spoken with your account team. If you do not have a Zebra account team, you will need to contact your purchasing partner in order to get access to this, um, either through as a demo or as a purchasable uh, product. It is a purchasable product, um, but uh, we have we have um, you know that settled out in order to be able to uh, work with our partners in order to do the purchasing of this. Um, so you will want to make sure that you are talking to your Zebra account team in order to get actual access to these APIs. Um, so we do have the um, the documentation available, but it's not going to be something that you can utilize until you've had that conversation and work through there. If you are a Zebra person and are trying to get access, um, please contact me after this call and we will get you set up. So um, in order to actually enroll your device into uh, Cloud Connect for RFID, I have a short video on how to do it primarily because um, I did not want to have to unenroll and re-enroll <laughs> uh, my reader going through. Uh, so this is the video showing how to do that. Um, Robin, I think we're not getting some audio on this. So if you're looking to share the audio, I think there's some. Okay, let me see if I can get it to share audio. We want to. All right, well, I can talk through it then. <laughs> not sure how to exactly do that. Um, but basically what this is saying is that you need to download and install the newest version of the FX Reader firmware. Uh, that's 3.7 and above. Um, so that's one of the things that you have to do uh, to initially get yourself set up. Um, in order to do that, you're just going to download the zip file, unzip it, and then go to the administration console like you see here and load those files up into the firmware uh, settings and then run it and it should go through. Uh, you do also want to do a, um, a cache refresh on your browser after you do that because we found that there's some issues with some of the menus not showing up if you don't do that. So this is showing how once you have the new firmware in there, you'll see a new communication menu called Cloud. And it is showing how um, in, in there, if you take a look at it, you'll see that uh, there's a couple of different things in there for a claim code and getting yourself enrolled and set up. Uh, so in order to do that, you have to actually go to the Zebra developer portal in order to get that claim code. So we're gonna show going through and getting that claim code in, um, in the, uh, data services menu. So she's going to go into the data service, and this is me going into the data services menu. Um, and so you'll see in the, in the menu there, you'll see a devices listing. And when you go in there, you'll actually uh, be able to see that you can enroll uh, printers uh, for the send file to printer API or you'll be able to uh, enroll fixed readers for this Cloud Connect for RFID API. Now, most people should only see one tenant in this list, um, and that that's for, uh, you know, eventually when different partners might have multiple customers they're working with, they might have access to multiple tenants. Um, but at this point, you're going to grab the claim code at the top of the screen. 
And then you're just going to copy that out and you're going to go then back to your uh, reader uh, and just paste it right in there. And you do, do make sure that Audio Connect is selected and then when you hit enroll, it should just connect right up. Um, and it takes a moment for it to enroll and then actually get connected. Yeah, if you're checking the log, you'll see it actually listed as cloud connected. And also you can go back to the portal. And if you click enrollment complete at the bottom, it will take you back to the main My Devices page. And on that page, you should then actually see your reader listed. So, hope that was useful for everyone. Um, <laughs> didn't want to redo that considering uh, I've already got everything set up and I just know the demo gods would hate me if I had to uh, redo that during the uh, live demo here. So I had that recorded for, uh, for this. Um, but those, that video as well as a few others will be available on YouTube fairly soon as well. Um, so once you have it enrolled into My Devices, um, the, uh, the, the reader will be available to, to see in there, but you won't be able to do anything until you've actually contacted your account manager and gotten set up with them to either get a demo or a purchase. Um, to actually access these APIs and uh, services. Once you have that done, um, you'll be able to uh, go into your apps and you should see a new app in here for the RFID. Um, we have a better name for it, but you'll see a, an app in here for RFID, a Cloud Connect. And uh, in there, you'll have a, a, a key and secret which then you'll be able to use to do the man to work with the management APIs. Um, there's a couple of different places to go to, uh, you know, get documentation and work with them. You can either work in the portal, and um, in the uh, cloud management for RFID page, you'll see, you know, all of the uh, rendered API specs. You're going to want to uh, do a three-legged OAuth, which we recommend to do through. Um, to do through uh, Postman, um, but once you've got the claim code in there or the um, the bear token from that, you can go ahead and use that uh, to work with any of these. Uh, it's a little bit harder though, uh, and we have a nice um, set of Postman collection that you can use to work with these APIs. So I'm gonna actually go through the Postman collection because it's a little bit easier to work with. The Postman collection is posted on GitHub um, so if you're in Zebra Devs, you'll see the ZDS uh, Postman Collection, Cloud Connect Postman Collection, and you can just pull down this collection and put it into Postman. Um, Postman is a free tool that is available to any developer who wants to use it. Uh, it is not a Zebra tool, it is, it is an external tool um, for working with APIs. Um, so basically you would just import that collection into here and you'll see a RFID reader management collection available. Um, I've added a few additional things to this, but this is essentially the same collection that uh, you get from, from GitHub. Uh, one of the first things in here is the authorization. You put in your key and secret from the portal um, on the apps page that I showed you. Uh, so you'll grab your key and secret from here and you will um, you can add it to your environment variables. We recommend to add it to the environment variables. Um, put that in here, and um, then you're also going to want to add to your environment variables uh, your device ID, which I already have in here for my reader. Um, so I'm going to go through some of these. Uh, API so you can see how they work and how they look. I'm going to run through and grab a new token. Um, we have this scripted so that you, you know, you just run the token once. It is available for about an hour <laughs> and uh, you can, you'll then just have to grab a new token at the end of the hour in order to continue to use them. Um, we do have in this collection a um, 
a way to get access to just your basic device information for uh, making sure that it's enrolled into the service. Uh, and you know some of your account information from from our um, data our data services platform. Um, once you have that, it's it's that's just useful information. There's APIs involved in this AOS um, assets uh, endpoint that allow you to get all your devices as well. Um, but we're just pulling it based on the uh, individual reader that we have here. Once you have that in there, you can go ahead and do things like getting the status of the reader. So we can go ahead and take a look and it says we've been had uptime of a couple of days now. I can actually go back to my reader page and check the status on here. Yeah. And you can see the numbers actually pretty much line up with what the uptime is. So you can see I have an actual pretty close connection with um, what the reader says as well as what um, we can pull from that API. So there's a few other ways to sort of verify that you have a live connection, but that's one of the one of the quickest ways to do it. Um, it will also give you a, a, a warning in here if your reader is maybe disconnected or if it's not able to actually access the reader. Um, you'll get a warning in here saying that it uh, wasn't able to see the reader within the last uh, 30 seconds or whatever it says, and um, that the information that it's providing below is actually the last time it was read. So it does kind of keep track of what the last, uh, you know, cache with the last uh, information that it pulled from that reader. Um, so getting the status, getting the version, which gives you versions of a lot of the different components of it. So firmware, um, you know, uh, bootloader and all the other file, <laughs> all the other versions in, involved in the reader is all listed in here. Um, so you can actually get an idea of where you are with the different aspects of the reader. Um, there's also a bunch of things, a bunch of APIs in here to handle a configuration of the reader. So those are primarily the statuses, um, but there's a bunch of configuration ones in here. So you can get network information, you can get the region, um, you can get uh, the you know app LEDs, you can get the configuration information, um, and this is like the XML file that as uh, integrators you guys might use, be used to working with. Um, is in here. Uh, if you don't work with the XML file very often, I don't recommend that you play around with it too much because uh, you kind of have to know what you're doing to, to uh, make changes to this. Um, but this is sort of your, your baseline uh, config reader configuration file. Um, so it's useful information to have. Um, so some of the other things that I wanted to show were things like the LEDs. Um, so you have an application LED on the reader and I'm gonna actually pull up my camera. So you can see the reader and the antenna I've got uh, showing there. So say I wanted to maybe find a reader when we've got uh, 20 readers within a um, huge warehouse and I wanted to find a specific one. Um, I could set the app LED to do something like flash red. Um, so I'm gonna actually change this to 20 seconds. So it's sending it and on the screen you'll see, on the screen you'll see it actually flashing. Um, and if I run the get app LEDs, it should show non-default, which means that I'm doing something interesting with it. Um, And you can change it to say green as well. Stop flashing. So we can see it now is flashing green on the screen. Um, so you can see you have pretty full interaction with the reader in different ways. Um, and that's just one of the little neat little tricks. You can also set the GPO for different activities as well. One of the things that you might notice in here and you might question is the mode. Um, this is something new that we have um, for the Cloud Connect for RFID space. Um, 
and I go through some of what that means in that the mode is essentially our way of handling RFID data in a more cloud-friendly fashion. So by traditional default, a reader will essentially send uh, every tag read it sees, um, as soon as it sees it, it will send it to its server, um, regardless of how many times it might have seen it in the past and how many times it might see it in the future, it is just going to continuously send reads every time it sees it, which might very well be multiple times a second. Um, which, while great for certain use cases, um, is not necessarily very cloud friendly. <laughs> you don't, you wanna keep cut down on the traffic as much as possible for that. Um, so having the mode set in the reader gives you the opportunity to change the, essentially how often, when and where um, the reader will actually send out uh, read events to your, your server. Um, so there's a couple of different modes that we have available. Uh, in fact, there's four currently, uh, and we'd love to hear feedback from the uh, community to hear what additional modes you know, for your different use cases might be needed. Um, if you do have need of actually seeing every single read event that the reader is gathering, um, then you know doing these modes might not work for you. But in a lot of use cases, we found you don't actually need to see every uh, every time it reads every single um, tag. You might be able to actually work with some of these modes. Um, so one of the modes is called Simple. It basically will uh, send out a event. When, when it first sees a tag, first time it sees a tag, it will send out an alert, um, an event, and then the next time that it sees that, uh, next time it sees that tag, um, it depends on if, if it's been gone from its site for a while, um, the next time it sees that tag, it will send out another alert. Um, so it gives the you know the basically when it when it see original tag and if the if the tag is gone for a while then it will resend out another alert on that. Um, there are a few other modes. Uh, inventory mode is another useful one where you can actually set a interval and um, it will tell you every tag it finds um, every time that interval is hit. So if you say set it to a minute you could then get all of the tags that it sees within its framework. Um, every minute it will, it will send out an event for that. Um, so think about the use cases of if you've got a retail store with a jeans display and you, um, you, know, you wanted to make sure that the jeans within that display are, are there on a regular basis and where they are, um, you know, maybe with multiple antennas. So, then you might set the antenna to be an inventory mode so that maybe every minute or every five minutes, it'll just go ahead and do an inventory of all of the tags within that, you know, within that area and be able to, you know, say, okay, this is what I currently have within these spaces or within the ranges of these antennas. Um, and then the simple mode would be say on a, uh, on a, on a portal uh, where, you know, somebody is going into or out of the store um, and that would be to say, okay, I'm seeing this pair of jeans leave the store or enter the range of the store doors. Um, and maybe that would trigger an alert to do something. Um, you can also add filters to, uh, to the reader to say, I only want to get tags with this um, EPC header to it, um, or I only want to get tags that are on a specific antenna. Um, and this is a filter on the reader itself. There's actually another way to filter the, the tag uh, events that are coming off of the webhooks as well, but just wanted to make sure everyone is aware there's actually two separate filters, one on the reader, which you can set in the mode here, um, and then one that you can do off the webhook to actually direct traffic to your endpoints, uh, wherever they may be. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the simple mode, which I think it's already in. And this is just gonna say for antenna one, I want it to be doing simple mode. Um, but say I wanted to do inventory and I wanted to, it to actually grab an inventory of labels every 10 seconds. 
I'll go ahead and set that and then I can get it and see it's changed on the reader and it will send me a inventory every 10 seconds. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because that's something that I'll use for the demo going forward. Uh, the other two modes are portal mode. Um, portal mode will essentially do a inventory of tags after a GPI event has been triggered. So essentially it'll trigger another event after the GPI event has been triggered um, to basically say when I'm opening the door, I want to make sure I see what, what tags are in the area. Um, and then conveyor, which from what I can tell, seems similar to the simple mode, but seems to be more configurable by antenna. Um, I haven't been able to dig into that one quite as much, um, but it's it seems pretty similar to the simple mode in that um, it detects when a tag is coming into its range and we'll alert you to that. So um, once you are set up on there and you've got all of your, um, your settings going on, um, for configuring it. You can also do uh, operating system updates. Currently speaking, we only have one, <laughs> one uh, version of the operating system available for over the air. Um, we actually have a couple of old ones in there. Um, I do not recommend pulling down any of the previous versions of this other than 3.7.26, which is the currently released one. Um, I suspect that the rest of these are going away. These are pre-release versions. Um, but essentially, these are the currently available versions of firmware that you can do an over-the-air update with. So if you were to grab this and put it into the set and run this, it would actually uh, update the firmware on your reader um, to this version of firmware that we have uh, stored up in the cloud. So that's some uh, some things that you can do with it and makes it a little easier to actually programmatically manage the reader. So once you have everything set up and you're going to want to actually start getting tag reads, one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure your mode is set, which we have it set to inventory mode, and then you're going to actually set it to start reading. Now, if it's already started reading and you do the start, you will get an error message. It's not all that clear what it's for, but generally speaking, if you get an error message after doing running the start API uh, endpoint, it will um, it'll tell you you've already got it started. Uh, same thing with the stop API. Um, so those are some things that <laughs> just to keep in mind. So I just started it reading. Now, just because I started it reading doesn't mean that it's actually going to send it anywhere other than to Zebra. Um, so you have to actually set up your webhook subscription in order to actually then get it to forward that information onto your servers. So in order to do that, that's something that we have back also on the developer portal. And under the subscriptions menu, which you will not see unless you are uh, fully onboarded onto uh, using these these APIs. Um, but in the subscriptions menu, um, we have essentially a way to add uh, webhook subscriptions into here. I already have one running. Um, I'm actually going to delete that one. And, adding a new one. So some of the things that you can do are to, um, there's a few different sites that you can go to to test this. Um, you can also, um, you know, obviously have your own endpoints on your servers, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and test this with a standard test site that's available. Um, there's a bunch of them out there. I don't have any re real recommendations one or the other, um, but this is just the one that seems, <laughs> you know, was available to me as I was uh, prepping for this. Um, so you would put in your endpoint. Um, right now it's doing a post to that endpoint, but in the future we plan to have it available to do a few different options on that. Um, but right now it's a post and you can select your reader. If you don't select any devices or say you don't have a, a device already enrolled that you want to have working with this, don't select anything. If you don't select anything, then it will actually send all reads um, to your endpoint regardless of whether or not you enrolled the device today, yesterday, or in two days from now. 
um, it will just forward all of those up there. Um, but this gives you the option of, say, sending um, uh, reads from this device to this endpoint, and then you can create a different subscription to send me reads from a different device to a different endpoint. Um, the other thing you can do in here is doing filtering. So this allows you to say, um, chain, you know, send reads from a specific antenna to one endpoint and send reads from a different antenna to a different endpoint or different um, uh, uh, EPC tag uh, events and uh, different things like that to, you know, basically get you to be able to direct traffic to different endpoints based on um, the payload of, of what it's, it's actually seeing from the reader. Um, I'm not going to put any filters in there for now, um, but that's that's essentially how that works is it's a JQ filter and you can just literally copy and paste one of these strings into there and, uh, you know, put in your own you know data and it will filter based on that. So this does take a moment, but it goes through, and now we'll see the new um, subscription listed in here. And you can pull up the page. It says that it's waiting for event. We started it reading. So it should be, once I pull out a tag, it should actually tell me that it sees it. So, so just posted a new one in there. Um, and if I pull up the body, It'll say it said an RFID read, give me a timestamp for it, what device it was on, uh, the EPC ID, what antenna it saw it on, um, and the um, RSSI. The reads actually tells you, especially for inventory mode, that will actually tell you in the time frame between inventory uh, pulls how often it saw that tag. Um, so that can be useful if you're trying to determine um, certain things like, you know, uh, how frequently it's actually seeing that uh, a specific tag. Um, so that was one tag in there, and I can actually throw another one on. Now these do these reads do happen in near real time. We've tested it to find that uh, for you know basic tags, it's coming through in somewhere around 100 milliseconds on average, so that's pretty quick. Um, if the tag has, um, has a, G, a GS1 encoded data on it, it will also actually do the GS1 decode on it, um, which I'll show you. We also have a, a separate API to do GS1 decodes on RFID tags independently of getting it through here, but it will do the GS1 decode on uh, the tags as well coming through here if it's a GS1 encoded tag, which gives you all the AIs, uh, all the common AIs, and it'll break down the components of that into more human readable terms. Uh, these are unencoded tags, so uh, it's just basically pulling, you know, the, the standard, in, you know, tag IDs, which are, you know, nothing very, <laughs> nothing very useful. Um, but you'll see when, when you actually have encoded tags that it will actually do the full decode on them for a, if it's a GS1 uh, compatible code. So uh, you can see how that is working. I can pull the tags from here, throw them into my little almost Faraday cage <laughs> to keep them from reading, and should stop reading in just a moment. Um, so we shouldn't get anything too much after 10.36. Uh, and it stopped reading. Um, you can also go into Postman and set stop to stop it reading as well. And we got a 200 okay. So um, those are the main components of the uh, Cloud Connect for RFID. Uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. Okay, Robin, hang in here. Uh, we have quite a few. Let's start up here. Um, Mark asks, do I still need class software or does Cloud Connect replace this as well? Uh, there's no additional software needed uh, for this. The, the reader is connecting directly up to Zebra servers. Um, you can 
do some work to uh, set up your own servers uh, as intermediates, but um, for Cloud Connect, it's, it's going directly to Zebra servers without um, needing to have any additional software installed on your systems. Jack asked, oh, um, there were a couple of questions of whether or not we were going to send the video segment, the one, the uh, dev bite that you did. We're currently posting those to our YouTube playlist. She actually has, uh, Robin did three dev bites. So as soon as we have those out, you can check our YouTube playlist on that. Um, and we can announce it in the portal as well. Uh, is there a separate claim code for each device? device or ah, can good you question, yeah. Um, the, the claim code is good for one week and up to a million devices. So you basically, if you're doing a mass enrollment of RFID readers, you have uh, one week on a single claim token, claim code. Okay. And is this specific only to Zebra RFID readers? It is, it's only, it's actually specific to FX 7500 and 9600. Um, so at the moment, those are the two uh, fixed readers that we have available for this at the moment. Okay. Adam asks, if the reader loses connection to the Cloud Connect, will it store read data on the reader until connection is reestablished or is read events lost? I don't believe it stores. I'll be, I'll be fair, I don't believe it will store if it is, um, if it loses its connection to the server. I could be wrong on that. Let me, I can check back, but I'm pretty okay. sure it won't. Robert asks, can you assign the antenna a physical location within the customer site? Can you assign the antenna a physical location? Um, you can like set a name for the antenna. I'm not sure exactly what you mean no, by assign an antenna. Antenna, a physical look. So, in other words, can you assign an antenna an actual physical physical location within the customer site? Well, an antenna obviously is in a physical location. I don't know if there's a. I honestly don't know if there's a way to sort of rename the antenna to be associated with that physical location. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're asking, though. Okay. Um, let's see. Can it push, push GPI events and can it send a message to my webhooks when a device goes offline? Uh, at the moment, it we can we can push a GP uh, GPI events are probably coming in an additional version uh, later on. Um, and the uh, the event to show when it's going offline is also probably in a later version um, as well. Okay. Um, is there software available for the mobile readers to connect to the cloud? Software available for the mobile readers to connect to the cloud? Um, we have a beta going, um, so that might be something to get uh, interested, you know, talk to your account team on uh, getting access to the beta. If X, FX Connect required, is FX Connect required and all the readers must connect to the internet? Do they have to be connected to the internet? They, uh, they have to be able to access the internet um, in order to, uh, yeah, in order to actually work with this. So they do have to be able to connect to the internet. Um, in order to work with this FX Connect as a piece of software, no, it's not necessary. Okay. Can you repeat the fourth load name and description? Uh, the fourth read mode, you mean? Mm -hmm. uh, that one is conveyor mode, um, which essentially is for conveyor belts. <laughs> Uh, to uh, get the, you know, get RFID tagged uh, products that are going across a conveyor belt. Uh, as far as I could tell at this point, it seems fairly similar to conveyor to simple mode, where it detects when a um, product is or new tag is entering its field of view. Um, but it's configurable by the antenna, so you okay. can have, you know, different antennas on different conveyors. Okay. And there was just a clarification statement. Um, the class. CLAS software is for ATR 7000. Seven, Cloud Connect is not for ATR 7000. Correct? 
that's my understanding. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. <just> yeah. <laughs> clarifying that. Um, uh, there's been some questions and statements. Um, how long uh, or how can we configure multiple device devices data into one single receiving channel? How can you, um, actually that can be done through the subscription. Um, so basically, if you had multiple, um, if you had multiple, uh, pull this up in the subscriptions. If you had multiple devices enrolled, I only have one reader enrolled, but if you had multiple devices enrolled, um, it would actually all show up in the subscription setup here. Um, so you'd see multiple device IDs and you could just select them all. Or actually, if you didn't select any of them, um, it would actually send all of them to the same uh, endpoint that you'd set up. Then a couple other points, um, just for clarification purposes, that we are working to add caching as a follow-up feature, correct, Robin? That's my understanding. Um, That's not what I... 100 percent sure. Oh. Well, uh, yes, it is correct. That, yeah. the cache, yes, caching is next version. Yes, right. I it's follow up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So readers on the intranet cannot <clears throat> cannot get a claim code, meaning a reader has to be connected to the intranet. Are there any ports URL that it needs that needs to be open? It does have to have a port open. Um, 8882 um, and yeah, 8882 needs to be open. Um, and just quick comment regarding your statement regarding offline storage and we they know that you're looking into it. How will you communicate that? Is that something that we can post in the a blog or? Yeah, we'll we'll certainly once once we have um, you know, cache storage and um, in cloud data storage of the uh, the tag read events, those we will definitely be posting a blog about and letting everyone know about that um, once that's available. Um, we'll have that on the portal, and then we always you know publish uh, and promote it in our DevBuzz newsletter and um, also um, in our social media. Uh, and I am getting a clarification. Um, so it, for the initial uh, enrollment, you will need also port 443 open just for SSL so that we can do that uh, confirmation in a uh, secure fashion t for enrolling the reader. Okay. Um, I was asked the question, how can I get the status of GPIO and update the GPIO. Um, that I know that you can set the GPO uh, through the management APIs. Um, getting the status of the GPI, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, I do know that the portal mode for reading is triggered based on the GPI event. Um, so basically you can uh, set up the portal mode uh, as the, one of the read modes and when a GPI event gets triggered, it will then trigger the, um, the reads to happen after that for a certain time frame. Um, Steve asks, is there a cost associated to connect to the Cloud Connect? There is. Um, we can set up demos for you uh, at no cost, but for actually working with it, uh, we're working with these APIs and webhooks, yes, there is a cost associated. And I just want to add as support to you, Robin, and to the Zebra Data Services team. If there's any questions on pricing options or costs or anything of that nature, always feel free to write those questions and send us an email at developer at zebra.com, and I will personally ensure that that team uh, gets your questions and is able to respond to you. I just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Yeah, we, we don't tend to talk pricing on these actual dev talks. Um, right. It's much better going through the proper channels to do that. Yep, and I'll make sure you get to the right people. Um, generic question. Uh, okay, Mark has a generic question. <laughs> Can an RFID reader, which is tethered to a COM port of a PC, be cloud connected through the PC? Um, I think we've done that, but probably not for the current version of it. 
No, not for the current version of it. I think that I have covered all of these questions. If there's something here that was missed or you come up with another question for Robin and the team, please, again, feel free to send these to our developer at zebra.com and I'll ensure they get to the right people. Um, the, as I noted before, this presentation is being recorded, so we'll go ahead and post that in the next five to 10 days up on our YouTube site, but you'll also get some information about how you can listen to it right away uh, in a follow-up email um, after this event. Um, yeah, I do actually have one or two more clarifications as we go through. Um, great. One of the things to know is that um, when Cloud Connect is enabled, LLRP is disabled, um, but like LLRP, if you are trying to set or manage certain settings using the admin console, so say you're trying to set or change the antenna uh, power levels, uh, you do have to turn off cloud, or you do have to um, disconnect from Cloud Connect. You don't have to disenroll, but you do have to disconnect from Cloud Connect in order to manage those settings, just like LLRP um, in, in, in that way. Um, but you can't use LLRP and Cloud Connect at the same time. Okay, so and that was a clarification. I apologize. <laughs> That's great. I, I, in the meantime, I got, of course, and a couple of last questions here. Um, er, uh, Eris asks, is there an API to direct uh, get to the retakes from the reader and not from the subscription? Is there, can you say that one more time? Is there an API to direct get or GET to the read tags from a reader and not from a subscription? to read tags to is there a get to oh you mean basically it, are the tags stored on the reader that you could just do a pull for that or stored somewhere else where you need to pull for that would be a, a future version yeah that'll, that'll that's a coming uh coming update for this is to have the, the storage of the read data yes and Ewald has one last question here. Do any of the modes provide an event when a tag exits the read range? Um, I don't think so, not at the moment. Okay. No, not at the moment. And you got a bunch of okay and thank yous. So okay. there you go. <laughs> Well, I mean, if, if that's a request, that's something certainly um, we do want to know about, that uh, if you have a use case where you want to know when a tag leaves the range, um, that's something that would be good to be able to share with the team so that we can add additional modes for that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm just monitoring to see if there's any last questions. Thanks for all the comments and the thumbs up for this. Um, great job, Robin. And if there's nothing else or anything else that you want to add, no, I think I've talked enough on this. <laughs> <laughs>